Are you looking for a travel trailer under 25 feet long so it fits in most state and national parks? Well, stick around, folks. We found some awesome travel trailers under 25 feet long. Hey everybody, Mike with RV Blogger here in front of the camera and Susan's behind the camera. And if you've seen us before on YouTube, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time seeing us, welcome aboard. Susan and I make tons of videos all about RVing and we invite you to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit that notification bell when you do so you'll be notified every single week when we release a brand new video. We also invite you to check out our website at rvblogger.com where we have hundreds of helpful articles all about RVing there as well. But without any further ado, let's get started on our review of travel trailers under 25 feet long. This travel trailer is the Coachman Catalina Expedition model number 192 FQS. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 4,008 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,691 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 5,040 pounds. The hitch weight is 642 pounds. It measures in at 21 feet, 8 inches long, and it can sleep up to four people. When you first walk into this travel trailer, on the left-hand side is where the refrigerator is located. Then we have the bathroom area, and it wraps on around into the living and kitchen area. And finally, the bed is at the front of the trailer. So when I first walk into this camper, my first thought is, wow, look at the amount of countertop space that you have in here. This is unbelievable for a smaller travel trailer. But other than that, it feels like it's roomy and spacious enough. It's got a sofa area that's in a little bit of a slide out, so it does create a little extra floor space in here and makes it feel nice and roomy. Now, when you first come in, like I mentioned, on my left-hand side here is where the refrigerator is located, and the doors swing in this way, but on just about every refrigerator out there, you can change the swing of the door if you would like to. But in this case, I really think it's okay uh, because if you're outside and you want to just come in and grab a cold drink, you don't have to run through the camper. You just open the door, grab a drink, and go back out. So not a bad setup. Uh, nice big freezer in here. This is a 12-volt refrigerator. And just about every camper we see nowadays has a 12-volt fridge. So it will run on battery or it'll run on shore power. And uh, we're seeing the old style of the absorption fridges that are powered by propane going away and everything's becoming more electric now, which is a great thing. These fridges cool much faster and they're much more efficient. And like I said, you can run them on battery or shore power. So when you're driving along, you can keep your fridge cool rather than having to turn off your propane gas while you're traveling uh, and just hope your fridge stays cold. And if you have a long travel day, it might warm up a little bit. So these are a really nice advantage. So like I mentioned, the kitchen in here just has a huge countertop. This is fantastic. Uh, what we have up at this end is a receptacle here, plenty of countertop space. The sink is a little undersized in my opinion for all the countertop space that it has. They could have put a little bigger sink in here, certainly a deeper sink, because I think this is too small for washing pots and pans and things, but it's got a nice gooseneck faucet overhead to try to make that work. Now, next to that, you've got a two burner range here, and uh, that just opens right up, and you can cook right on your cooktop. But look at all this countertop space. Now, at the other end here, it's also got a receptacle, so if you wanna plug in a toaster, or an air fryer, or a toaster oven, a coffee maker, I mean, you've got plenty of room for all that stuff. Up top here, you've got a very spacious cabinet, on the left side of the microwave, microwave itself is a good size for this camper. And then an even bigger storage cabinet on this side of the microwave oven. Underneath of the kitchen sink and all across this countertop area, there's ample storage space for all your storage needs. Now, here I am sitting on the couch in this camper and more and more often we're seeing no dinettes and a multifunctional couch instead. So when you're sitting here across from the kitchen area, this is your dinette. There's actually a freestanding table that's included. It's not here at the RV show right now, but you know it would extend along, it would extend along here and two or three people could sit here and eat at the freestanding table. Another nice advantage to the freestanding tables is that you can take them outside if you don't wanna use it inside. So it's a nice little feature to have. Now, another thing that this 
couch will do is it serves as the couch so you can sit here and relax and enjoy your time maybe watch tv and take it easy and finally this does jackknife out into another bed and this is a good size sofa let's get a quick measurement on it here for you it's about 66 inches long so five feet six inches and it's about 43 inches wide so a smaller adult definitely a kid or two could sleep on here now to put the sofa back, you just jackknife, just jackknife it right back up. Now, above here, it does come with some storage, but I want to show you something on these storage cabinets. Sometimes you'll see these cabinets, and they just they don't stay up. So if you go to get things in and out of here, you have to hold the cabinet open. I would much prefer to see a different style hinge on here that holds the door open for you so you can use both hands to access the cabinet. Just something to keep in mind when you're out shopping around for your trailer. Now just beyond the sofa is where the bed is located here. Now this is considered an east-west bed. The great thing about that is it conserves space and the trade-off for that is that someone who sleeps towards the one end, the wall end, if they get out of bed at night they may interrupt their partner while they're sleeping but that's okay. I mean, it's a, it's everything's a trade-off in a small camper. That's for sure. Now, up above here, you have got one of the largest storage areas I've ever seen in a camper over top of the bed. I mean, this is just a gigantic cabinet space. It is two feet deep, runs the whole width of the camper, so a lot of storage space can be found up there. And in addition to that, at the head of the bed here, there's a little flip-up where you can also have some additional storage underneath of there. Now, there are uh, TV um, cable hookups and receptacle here, so you could set a TV on the countertop here or maybe mount it on the wall, but I would recommend probably putting it on the countertop. And on the other end, there is a receptacle and USB ports, and there are also USB ports on this side of the bed as well. So it's wired up for everything. There's even another receptacle down here below my leg. Uh, so if you have tablets, computers, whatever, you're laying in bed, you need to recharge at night, you have ample opportunity to do that. Another nice feature is windows on each side and a nice big window in the front. So you get a lot of natural light inside of your camper. And of course you can close everything up at night, and make it nice and dark for yourself to sleep. Why don't we measure the bed and see how big it is. And this bed is about uh, 74 inches by 60 inches, so it's definitely considered a short queen bed. So here I am in the bathroom located in the very back of this trailer, and I'm standing in the shower, and as you guys know, I'm 5'11", and there is maybe an inch or two over my head. So for you folks that are taller than, say, 6'1", you're going to have to crouch down a bit in this shower. One other thing about the shower to note, it is a corner style shower, which I really like. It, it's a very efficient use of space, but um, I really like it better when they have the glass enclosure around it because otherwise you've got a shower curtain here and the shower curtain is laying on the floor in the shower. So you could step on it. The curtain itself is going to get wet on the bottom. It's just kind of inconvenient, so I wish they did a little better job with that, but you can always change it after you buy it. You can add shower doors later, so hey, buy the camper if you like the floor plan and then add shower doors later, no problem. Now, when you're standing in here, you'll notice you've got a few places for shampoo and soap. There's even a little step in here, so if you ladies need to shave your legs, boom, there you go, nice and convenient. Just outside of the shower, we have a mirror on the wall we have a decent sized sink here for the uh, sink vanity. And then there's a receptacle on the side and there's additional storage below. And when you're sitting on the commode in here, I will not pass the elbow test on this side, but I'll pass on that side. This travel trailer is the Winnebago Micro Mini, model number 1720 FB. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 3,755 pounds a cargo carry capacity of 1,745 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 5,500 pounds. The hitch weight is 426 pounds. It measures in at just 20 feet, five inches long, and it can sleep up to three people. When you first walk into this travel trailer on the left-hand side, you've got some cabinet and countertop space, and the bathroom is located back there. 
Then you wrap on around through the kitchen and dinette area, and in the front of the camper is where your bed is located. All right, when you first walk into this travel trailer, my first impression is it feels a lot like a Winnebago. I mean, it's well thought out, well designed. It looks great in here, and it just feels very, very comfortable. Now, on my left-hand side here, you'll notice that you've got all of this storage cabinetry here, and this is really just an extension of the kitchen, in my opinion. I could see you maybe setting up a coffee pot over here, um, things along those lines, because there is a receptacle here. There's also a couple of USB ports. There's actually a C port built in there too. So if you needed to use this for like throwing your keys, your phone and all that stuff on the counter, you could also do that and recharge them up. Now down below here, there's another cabinet with even more storage. Now just to my right is where the kitchen is located. And we'll start from the top and work our way down. Up top here, you have a gigantic storage cabinet in here. Now there's no shelf in here, but you can buy a quick shelf at Amazon or Walmart or something like that and make the most out of your storage in that cabinet. But they also put a convection microwave here, which is a great choice because that way you don't have to have a separate oven and microwave. So it makes the most of the space in this smaller size camper. Down below that, we have a three burner propane stove, which is really unusual in campers that are under 25 feet, but this one's got all three, which is a great little setup. And then below that, it's got a pots and pans drawer so you can stow all of those away. Now off to my right over here is where the kitchen sink is located. And this is a really, really good size kitchen sink. It's a big rectangular deep sink with a nice big gooseneck faucet overhead with an integral sprayer so you can wash all those dishes up nice and clean. Uh, you also have some additional countertop space here and if that's not enough countertop space there is an extended top off to the right hand side as well. There's also a receptacle located on the side of the cabinets so you could put a coffee pot here too or a toaster plug it in and be good to go. Now underneath of the kitchen sink there is also additional storage here. And then up top, you've got a little soap drawer, or I guess you could put your sponges in here. And then below that, you've got these nice full extension drawers for all of your kitchen utensils. And there's even one last drawer all the way down at the bottom, but that just opens up to where your fuses are located. Just past the microwave and the cooktop is where the refrigerator is located. This is a very good size refrigerator. I mean, it's really huge. And it is a 12 volt fridge, which means it runs on a battery or shore power. And that's a very modern uh, feature in all of the new campers that you see coming out these days. Now the dinette here easily seats two people. It's a very nice comfy dinette. Um, the table will drop down. And this can also become another bed for somebody. And if you do that, you would be looking at about and eh, just like five feet, 11 inches, which is my height, by the way. And it's about 32 inches wide. So, you know, an average size adult or certainly a smaller child would be able to sleep here very, very comfortably. Now, also down below each of the dinette benches, they, they have little doors on here that open up so you have additional storage under there. Then, of course, you've got a really nice window above your dinette. You've got a receptacle, USB ports, and a little light under here as well. So if you're working at your dinette table, you know, scoping out where you want to go, explore the area, things like that, you can have your computer here, be able to plug it in, or just be able to, you know, recharge your phones or whatever. And then up top here... You've got four nice size cabinet doors that open up for even more storage. Now, just above the dinette on the bathroom side is where your TV location is. It's in a decent spot for this camper. You'd be able to see it from one side of the dinette. You could also see it while you're laying in bed in the evening, relaxing. And then below here, well, on the top of the countertop, you actually have a wireless charger for your phone. And then below that, you've got like a pantry cabinet under here for more even more storage. So here I am all the way at the front of this travel trailer, which is where your bed is located. And the first thing you'll note back here is there's a little end table on this side of the bed. There's also a receptacle and USB ports here. And there's also some open storage down below that. Speaking of storage, there's even some more storage underneath of the bed because this little door opens and swings out. 
so you can access that area. Now, when you're in bed, you've got, like I mentioned, USB ports here. You also have them on the other side of the bed and a little cargo net pocket there. So no matter which end of the bed you wanna sleep on, you can you know, charge your phones or whatever you need to do. Now there's also a window on each side of the bed location, which I really love. You can open up the windows, get some nice cross breeze in here and enjoy some nice fresh air. Up above me here, you've got a light that clicks on and off right here at the bed location. And then we have plenty of storage overhead as well. Now the mattress in here is really unusual because it's not as big as it could be for some reason. Maybe, uh, I'm not really sure why, but I measured it already and you could fit an 80 inch mattress by 60 inches, which is a residential queen size mattress in the bed location. Now here we are in the bathroom and of course I'm standing in the shower and as you guys know, I'm 5'11". Now in the skylight area here, there is probably two inches over my head. Uh, so if you are taller than say 6'1", you're gonna have to crouch down a little bit to fit into this shower stall. But I will say this, they did add a retractable shower door in here, which is an awesome feature, much, much better than having a shower curtain. And then of course, you've got your shower head, which, you know, the wand attaches and you can use that however you would like. Now, what I don't see in here is any place to put your soap or shampoo. And I also don't see a vanity in the bathroom except wait a minute this baby pops on down and this is where your bathroom sink would be wash your hands under here now some of you guys are probably wondering where the heck is the sink drain and basically what happens is all the water co collects in the bowl when you close it the water pours through here and it ends up going down into the drain same drain that the shower uses now outside of the shower is where the commode is located it's a little cramped in here i gotta say if this when this door is shut it's you know pretty, it might even hit your knee it'll hit your knee it's pretty tight in here you kind of have to sit that's why i'm kind of sitting at an angle you kind of have to sit at an angle in here to make it work it will pass pass the elbow test on one side but definitely not the other now underneath the owner's bed it's almost all storage which is accessible from both sides of the trailer this travel trailer is the Forest River R-Pod, model number RP202. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 4,574 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,911 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 6,485 pounds. The hitch weight is 485 pounds. It measures in at 25 feet even, and it can sleep up to three people. When you first walk into this travel trailer, you walk right into the kitchen area. As you wrap on around, you've got your dinette and entertainment area. In the middle of this travel trailer is where the bathroom is located, and then at the very front is where the private owner's bedroom is. Now, when you first walk into this travel trailer, my first thought is, hey, you know, it feels really good in here for a smaller travel trailer. And part of the reason for that is because the dinette itself is in about a three foot slide out. So it opens up the room quite a bit and makes a lot of floor space in here. Now this camper also has a rear kitchen and it's also an inline kitchen, which means all of your appliances are in one line. Now your refrigerator is located right by the entry door, which you know what? It's not a bad location for your fridge because you can be outside and having a good time. You need to pop in, just grab a soda or a water or whatever and you don't have to run through the whole camper to get one. You can just pop in here, open the fridge, and there you go. Now, the refrigerator that's in here was a little bit of a surprise for me because it's an absorption style refrigerator, which means this fridge runs off of either shore power or propane. And we aren't seeing very many travel trailers these days with this style of fridge in them anymore. Most of them are moving over to the 12 volt models. The absorption style refrigerators take much longer to get cold. Uh, we have one in our class C RV and we have to plug everything in at least 12 hours before we wanna start loading food into the refrigerator to give it time to get cold. And the other big uh, thing to worry about with this style of refrigerator is that your trailer needs to be really, really level for them to work properly and efficiently. But all that being said, it is a good size fridge and separate freezer and it's in a great location. 
Now, as we make our way across up top here, you'll notice you've got these three storage cabinets up top with glass inlays. Very nice look. I like the lighter wood cabinetry as well. It just keeps things bright, fresh, and modern in here. Just below that, you have a really nice window on the back of the travel trailer. And then you have your kitchen area with your really nice sized single bowl round deep sink with a gooseneck faucet overhead. Next to that, you've got your double burner range, and then you've got a little bit of countertop space. Now, ideally, I would prefer to see them sort of, you know, maximize the countertop space and maybe take these burners and turn them so they're back and front, and that would give you more countertop space off to the side. There's also a receptacle here, but in my opinion, it's on the wrong side of where you would need it. Like if you set up a coffee pot or a toaster, it'd probably be over here where your countertop space is, but the receptacle's all the way over here. Now the reason for that is because this is actually an exterior wall to the camper and you just don't find receptacles in exterior walls of campers, hardly ever, if at all. Now down below all of that, uh, you have a nice convection style microwave oven, which is great because you can bake things or microwave things in the same space. Very efficient, good use of space. And then below that, you've got a nice lighted cabinet with plenty of storage underneath your kitchen sink. Now on the other side of the opening that comes in from the entry door to the trailer, right across from the fridge, you've got this really nice big cabinet space here. Now there are tracks in here with a couple of shelves and these shelves are fully adjustable. So you can put them at any height that you want inside the cabinet space, which is fantastic. And there's another wide open cabinet down below as well. So here I am in the dinette area as we wrap around from the kitchen and the dinette here is a pretty good size. I mean, you can see me sitting here. There's a, there's a strap here holding the table in place, but uh, you know, you could sit four people here pretty comfortably. You might have to squish in a little bit depending on the size of the people. Uh, but I do like the fact that there are three windows in the slide out. You can open them all up, get a nice cross breeze. It's got an upgraded fixture above. This top will drop down and this can become another bed for you. And if you do that, you would end up with about, eh, about six feet by you know, 40 inches of space here. So an average sized adult or a couple of small kids could sleep here pretty easily. Down below each of the dinette benches, there is storage underneath both of them that you can access and take advantage of as well. One thing that's missing in this slide, however, uh, is a receptacle in the dinette area. Uh, I know that Susan and I, when we work in our RV, we use the dinette as our office. And so it's great to have a receptacle there because we can plug in our computers, keep them charged, what have you. It's just kind of missing here. There are other receptacles around that you could use, like one here on the wall. And you just have to run your extension cord from here over to where your computers are. You know, again, you won't find receptacles typically in slide out walls or exterior walls of campers. This is an interior wall. And of course, that's why you'll find your receptacle there. Uh, sometimes you'll find receptacles underneath the dinette booths. That's another good spot to put them, uh, but not in this camper. Now, right across from the dinette is where your TV and entertainment center is located. So you've got a nice TV that mounts on the wall here below that. You've got some of your controls for your slide outs and all that kind of stuff, awnings and what have you. You've got some open storage with the cargo netting here, which I really like. I like the cargo netting look and it also holds everything in place for you. And then down below that, you've got a fireplace, which is a great feature in a smaller camper that's, gosh, this thing's less than 25 feet long. So that works really, really well. Just next to the entertainment area here, we have a really large wardrobe closet. There's a bar up top. You can hang things in here or just use it for storage however you would like. And then there's additional storage down below. So just past the kitchen area and entertainment area is where the bathroom is located in the middle of this travel trailer. Susan's standing in the bathroom now and shooting into the bedroom, which is all the way at the front. Now at the front of this camper, you'll notice you've got this really large window up here. It opens up. You've got a privacy screen and a shade screen so you can black it out at night when you're sleeping or leave the screen open and get some nice ventilation in here as well. There are also windows that are on each side of this bedroom so that helps with additional ventilation. Now on each side of the bed you'll notice that you've got 
uh, wardrobe cabinet that's lighted. So when you open it up, you can see what's in there. You've got a bar on the top of each of these cabinets so you can hang all of your garments there. Uh, one thing that they did not do in this camper is put a bank of cabinets above. We see that very often over top of the wardrobe cabinets. It just gives you extra storage in here. But in this camper, they did not do that probably because they didn't want to block the view of the window, but it does cost a little bit in storage space. Now on each side of the bed, there's a good size nightstand that's here and each nightstand has its own receptacle and USB ports. So electronically, you are all set and ready to go. Now the bed itself, let's see what this measures in. So it's 74 inches by 60 inches. So it would be considered a short queen bed. And if you lift the bed underneath, you've got access to some storage space under there too. Now, one feature I really like in here is the TV location. They've kind of got a built-in entertainment center here and you can put a really large TV into this area and your cable and receptacle and antennas are all here for you and pre-wired in place so your TV will hang here perfectly. And then down below that, we have some open storage with these bungee cords to hold things in place. But all in all, it really just gives it a very nice look. So here we are in the bathroom. It's considered a mid bath because it's right in the middle of this camper, but it runs the whole entire width of the camper. So it's a pretty large bathroom for a smaller camper for sure. Now the shower in here is a very nice setup. Uh, it's got three shelves in the corner for your soap and shampoo, removable wand and all that good stuff. The shower door in here is a curtain, but the curtain's mounted into a track system. And the track at the top at least bows out into the room, so it even gives you a little more room while you're in the shower. Now the height in here, let's check it out. You guys know that I'm 5'11", but your headroom into the skylight area is about six feet, six inches and your headroom throughout the entire camper outside of the shower uh, is about, what is that, six feet, eight inches. So a decent amount of space in here, especially for you taller folks. So Susan and I just switched places. Now she's standing in the shower shooting the rest of the bathroom. As you can see here, it's a nice setup in here. You've got a really good sized medicine cabinet up top with a little bit of open storage built in. You have a nice size countertop area around your vanity sink. You also have a receptacle here. And then down below your sink, you've got some storage there. And then off to the right, you've got this nice mirrored cabinet, which could serve as your linen closet or your linen cabinet. And then down below that, you've got a couple of fully extendable drawers. Finally, they went ahead and put the central vac in the bathroom area. So you can essentially sweep the entire trailer to the middle. Everything goes right into your central vac. As far as the bathroom goes, and I'm sitting on the commode right now, I passed the elbow test with flying colors. Let us know which one of these travel trailers is your favorite and why in the comments down below. We'd love to hear from you, what you like, what you don't like about each one of these campers. And if you'd like to see even more travel trailers under 25 feet long, just click the box down below and Susan and I will see you in the next video.